This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. Nearly a month after a photo of a Honduran mother and her small kids fleeing tear gas fired by U.S. Border Patrol captivated the nation, 39-year-old Maria Meza was finally admitted into the United States this week with her five children, and their asylum request is now being processed. But this came only after California Congress members Jimmy Gomez and Nanette Barragan intervened on her behalf, camping out with Mesa's family and other migrants on the U.S. side of the border near the Ote Mesa port of entry between Tijuana and San Diego, surrounded by metal barriers and border guards and riot gear. The lawmakers were at the border to investigate claims the Trump administration's rejecting asylum seekers at official ports of entry, violating international and national law. Um, California Congress member Nanette Barragan joins us now from Washington, D.C. She's a member of the House Committee on Homeland Security, just back from the border. Uh, Congress member Barragan Aragon, thanks so much for being with us. Describe what you did this past Monday. Well, I went down. I went down uh, to uh, Otay Mesa, uh, which is a port of entry down in Mexico, uh, with one of my colleagues. Uh, we had uh, we were asked to go down to observe as Maria um, was going to cross and uh, present herself for asylum. Um, so, explain exactly what you did. Um, Democracy Now! was recently on the border. We saw people for hours, for days, not being let into the U.S. Uh, you did something incredible. Somehow, you got Maria and her family over the line into the U.S., which is still before the border guards. Well, it was an interesting thing to see at Otay Mesa. What happens is the U.S. Um, Mexico line actually occurs before you get to a CBP uh, border agent. And so we were able to walk right up to the agent, uh, which crossed over into U.S. territory, uh, where her lawyers were ahead of her and said, we want to present our client for asylum. Now, while they were talking to the CBP officer, uh, Maria, her children, along with eight unaccompanied minors and another male, were able to just walk onto U.S. soil. And so it was an interesting thing, because you had a CBP officer um, about, I'm going to guess, about seven feet into U.S. territory. So explain what you're demanding now. Not only for Maria, we just got the news that the U.S. is going to send uh, immigrants who are being asylum seekers back to Mexico while they wait, which could take weeks, months, what, years? Yeah, it's a very dangerous policy uh, to have people waiting in Mexico. If you go down there and you take a look at the conditions, um, it's not very sanitary. I'm sorry, it's not very sanitary. Uh, but not only that, people are being uh, searched out. In this case, Maria actually had some of the right ringers were trying to find her. They had to hide her and her family. They had to move her. Um, you can just imagine what it's like. We are also hearing uh, the reports of the two uh, young teenagers that were killed there. Mm -hmm. It's not a situation where you want to put people who are fleeing violence to stay in a place where there is violence and still putting them in danger. So, the investigations of right now, there's a five month old who's in the hospital who is being held by ice in the freezing cold, uh, uh, what they call ice boxes. Um, uh, and then you have the horror of the story of Jacqueline, uh, the seven year old indigenous Guatemalan girl who died in Border Patrol custody. What are you demanding on the Homeland Security Committee in terms of investigations of all of this, Nanette? Well, we certainly want to investigate the circumstance of what happened. Um, now, let me tell you, just being at the border with Maria and her children and seeing how CBP responded, I can actually understand now why we are hearing more and more reports of children being ill, of children dying. In our situation, you had Customs and Border Protection officers sitting right there, allowing three- and four-year-old children waiting hours on end, in Maria's case, nine hours in the cold, on the cement, 
Um, they could go nowhere to eat. They couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom, because if they left this little patch of U.S. soil, a Mexican immigration officials and police who were on the Mexico line just waiting for them. And so, to see the disregard that some of the officers at CBP had for uh, migrants was um, just disturbing to see and hear. We even had a CBP officer who was talking out loud about how terrible migrants were, how they were coming to commit crime. And so, if they have this attitude, they really aren't going to have any regard for human life and their dignity. Now, let me tell you, there are some there are good CBP agents. I represent a port of entry, um, but there are bad apples, and that's a real issue. So we want to make sure that there is an investigation on what happens. We want to make sure it doesn't happen again. In the case of Jacqueline, we want to also make sure that we put in standards and procedures so that there's a real medical screening. What I understand happened in the Jacqueline's case, it could be something as simple as them of them asking, is everybody okay? That is not what you need to do mm. so that you can make sure and ensure that children are okay. I want to ask you to stay with Had us so we can do part two of this discussion. I believe they would have seen that she was not well and would have got medical attention much sooner. My colleague, uh, Dr. Raul Ruiz, who We're is— We're going to have to leave it there, but we will do part okay. two and post online at democracynow.org. Thanks so much, Congress Member Nanette Barragan, just back from the U.S.-Mexico border. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.